statement this time. <laughs> it's a blindside us again. So on hold, everything points towards the inflation report next week. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're just six days away from when we actually get this formal announcement on the Bank of, Assist Bank of England's assessment on the work merits of forward guidance and intermediate thresholds. So there, there didn't really seem a great deal of point in, in putting out a statement. And indeed, you know, the effectiveness of last month's, uh, last month's statement it was still there. I mean, uh, gilt yields have been capped, uh, sterling has been capped to the upside as well, and, and interest rate expectations have been pushed back well into 2015. There's a slight reaction in the market, uh, sterling picking up about uh, 40, 50 ticks uh, back above 152. So there's obviously some expectation or a slight expectation that they may have come out with a statement on forward guidance. Yeah, there was, there was certainly that possibility, and I guess, as you said, you know, that we were somewhat blindsided by last month's announcement, so there was always that risk, and, you know, if they'd come out and sort of reaffirmed it, then that perhaps would have, would have justified Sterling perhaps being a little bit weaker as we head into this forward guidance anticipation next week. Carney, um, bizarrely as it may sound, he may be in something of an uncomfortable position, um, but not because of weak data, but because of strong data. Uh, today's PMIs, for example, extremely strong pointing to annual growth, annualised growth of around 4%, yet he's already told us about this forward guidance. How does he manage that one? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a nice position to, to be in, to be honest, uh, especially when you compare it to the start of the year when we were actually quite gloomy about the prospects of the UK economy. It's been quite a rapid turnaround. But um, I guess, you know, we're, we're not all financial journalists, we're not all economists. Um, you know, householders are still somewhat cautious on, on the outlook, and I think providing a bit of forward guidance actually helps them. Just to be clear, you think that uh, today's data and the other pieces of data we've had, the strong data notwithstanding, the bank will still press on with forward guidance next week? Yeah, I think that's right. I don't, certainly not QE, certainly no more rate uh, cuts, but I think they want to keep the monetary conditions that are currently pretty accommodative in place to ensure that recovery continues. They don't want the market to push on and, and push up sterling and, and push up interest rates. So no more QE, no more bond buying, no more rate cuts. What might else uh, they go ahead with? Buying, buying other sorts of assets? I, to be honest, I don't think they, they need to. I think um, there's enough signs now that the recovery is gaining a bit of momentum. There's also been positive signs from external economies such as the Eurozone. The data flow is looking a little bit better there. The US outlook for the second half of this year is probably better than the first half. So I don't think they need to do anything else. And just to finish up, as I mentioned earlier, uh, today's PMI, manufacturing PMI, consistent with annualised growth of around 4%, pretty punchy. That's got to be unsustainable, right? We would assume so. I mean, we'd assume something of it tailing off um, a little bit. But, you know, the near-term outlook is still there. We've still got a lot of growth loss that's got to be made up. So there is still spare capacity in the economy. So a bit of a above-trend growth would actually be quite a welcome, welcome environment to be in right now.